Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Sunday. Hooray, we made it. I hope you guys were at our life Sunday. How many were there? Yeah, were you there? Oh, I saw you. That's right. Good job. Um, last week we had life Sunday, so I didn't post a video. But this week we are finishing our series in Haya. And I don't have my coat on again. I'm going to wear it on Sunday though, because I'm at the church recording. And I'm here, you can see in my office, and I got my Forest Cliff shirt on. It is our last day of camp and our last week of camp. We've had an awesome time. We had three weeks of camp here at Faith St. Thomas, and then we had eight weeks of camp total with Forest Cliff. Um, they are they had eight weeks total, and it's been amazing. Do you guys have your church socks on today? You do? Oh, let me see. Oh, wow. Oh, I like those ones. Those Are those nachos? I think those are nachos. Wow, nacho socks. Those are so cool. I have my church socks on. Hold on. I'll try and get it in the camera. I got some kind of strange checker pattern thing right here like this. Yeah. <laughs> And then I have another checker pattern. It's like blue and white and red, all kind of stuff. Nice. Well, thanks for wearing your church socks. I was talking to someone, talking to someone about their church socks, and they're like, "Well, why do you always wear church socks?" Well, you know what? I wear my church socks for two reasons. First reason, because it reminds myself that I'm a part of a community. And when you wear your church socks, you think, "Oh man, I'm either going to church or I'm a part of a community who wears church socks." And so I want that to remind you it's part of community. Second thing is, well, pretty much. I just like being different because God made us wonderfully different and wonderfully complex. And that is one of my things. I love being different. It's super fun. And I like that you like being different with me. It's so much fun to do this together because we are a part of community together. So we have been learning how to take off our bad habits and put on good habits. We've learned things like taking off lying and put on truth. Things like taking off stealing, putting on hard work. Things like, wow, what else? Oh, taking off hate and put on love, lots of things like that. And there's a Bible story uh, for a guy named Saul. And he was going around and he was killing Christians. He was hurting them. And God stopped him on the road one day and this bright light shone. And he said, hey, whatever you're doing to them, you're doing to me. You're hurting me. I need you to stop. And in that instant, Saul, <laughs> Saul decided to stop. He went blind. And you're going to hear the story about how he was blind and then he was healed and then he stopped. He took off those bad habits and he put on the good habits and Paul became, or Saul became Paul and he started spreading the good news of Jesus everywhere he went. So we're going to practice taking off our bad habits and putting on our good habits. So check out the Bible story videos and we'll be right back. It may sound really hard to take off old habits. After all, it is a lot of work. Yeah, there are some things that are pretty easy for us to take off, like... Our stinky socks. Oh. <laughs> or a winter coat when we walk inside to the nice warm air. But when we're talking about taking off bad habits and putting on new ones, now that's a tough job. But a super important one. You're so right, Chuck. Putting on new good habits will help us live how God wants us to. And to help you really understand, we've put together a pretty sweet example. Just because we're ho, ho, ninja masters and have some pretty sweet ninja skills, we still need to be reminded of exactly what we need to stop and start doing. So take exhibit A, the ice cream sundae. Sundays are the best, right? Normally, yes, but not this one. Let's have a closer mm. look. As you can see, we have a good start with some vanilla ice cream. But if you really get to looking at it, you can see there's some pretty yucky stuff getting in the way. Which is kind of like when we start with having a good heart that wants to do what's right, but we also have some bad habits that start to make their way to the surface. But if we remove all of these bad things, like lying. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and saying unkind words? Ugh. Or even holding on to bitterness? Hey, I've been looking for that. Huh. <laughs> we'll start to get to a place where we can replace those bad things with good ones. Like telling the truth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or saying nice things. Oh. <laughs> Forgiving others. Oh, yum. Whoa. <laughs> oh, oh, and we can't forget the cherry on top. 
which is like putting on love. Mm. And I do love cherries. <laughs> <laughs> Putting on new habits is the way to becoming a master ninja. But more than that, it's the key to living life the way that God wants us to. So, the next time you've got one of those bad habits that you need to take off, remember how great. Hmm. And? Delicious. <laughs> I believe Chuck said, and delicious mm. it can be when you replace that bad habit mm. with a new one. But hey, mm. man, save some of that for me. Oh, geez. <laughs> Sorry, friend. <laughs> mm. Konnichiwa. Congratulations on completing all of the ninja challenges. You have learned the importance of taking off old, bad habits and putting on new, good habits. As a true ninja warrior, you must always remember your training and never turn back to your old ways. In the book of Acts, we learn how we can impact the world when we take off the old and put on the new. There was once a man named Saul. Saul was angry and hated people who followed Jesus. Saul hated them so much that he even asked for permission to start putting them in jail. But while he was on his way to do just that, something amazing happened. A bright light flashed around him. Saul fell to the ground and heard a voice say, Saul, Saul, why are you hurting me? Saul didn't know who the voice was, but then it said, I am Jesus. I am the one you are hurting. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. But when Saul got up, he couldn't see. Saul's friends helped him up and took him to the city like Jesus had said. While Saul was in the city, Jesus spoke to one of his followers in a dream. His name was Ananias. Jesus told Ananias to go meet Saul and put his hands on Saul's eyes so he could see again. But Ananias was so scared. Jesus knew what was going to happen, so he told Ananias to go and not be afraid. So that's exactly what he did. Ananias went to Saul and placed his hands on him. Immediately, Saul was able to see again, and he was so happy. Because of all that had happened, Saul believed that Jesus was God's son and decided to take off his old, sinful habits and put on new ones. At that point, Saul's life was changed forever. He was baptized and started learning more about Jesus. Saul traveled the world and told others about God's love. To become a ninja warrior, you must always remember to take off the old and put on the new. So what did you guys think about that video? Saul, right? So Saul was blinded and he saw a man named Ananias and Ananias touched Saul and he healed him. And then Saul went on to become Paul and he changed the church. He changed how or what he was doing, took off his bad habits and put on good habits and started spreading the good news of Jesus to everyone. And I want you guys to do that today. How's the memory verse? This is our very last week for our memory verse. It's found in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 23 and 24. And it goes something like this. It says, you must be made new in your heart and in your thinking. Be like that new person who was made to be like God, truly good and pleasing to him. Now, at our house, I bought a large container of sour keys. And um, Jude actually <laughs> loves to ask me if he can say his verse. And he says his verse. And then he gets sour keys. He loves doing that almost every day. And we encourage you guys to do the same thing. If you want to send a video to me, I know a couple of you have done that. And I owe you some sour keys. Holden. I know I got you, buddy. I got you covered. I'll give you some sour keys. But um, if you want some sour keys, send me a video. I will come around and drive around and give you guys sour keys. Now, next week, listen, next week we're going to start a series called Back to School. And it's going to be an eight-week series on how we can be the light in our school, how we can be Jesus followers in our school. It's going to talk about things on how to make friends, how do we deal with bullies, things like how do we show love to others, how we be a good student, stuff like that. And so I want you guys to come along in our series called Back to School. Now, how many have gone back to school shopping? You've done that, got some new shoes, maybe maybe a couple extra pants. Maybe moms and dads are like, oh my goodness, my kids are growing like crazy. I can't believe I have to buy all this stuff. But yeah, um, 
while you're doing back to school shopping, if you have any extra school supplies, can you save those aside for me? We're going to get in contact with some of our schools locally here in St. Thomas. And in a few weeks, once everyone's settled, we're going to contact those schools and they're going to need some extra supplies, pens, pencils, papers, erasers, markers, pens, all that stuff, that normal stuff you would buy for back to school. If you have any extra or if you're going out, buy some extra, just set it aside. We're going to do a collection. I'll make sure I give you guys lots of time, but we're going to collect all that kind of stuff and we're going to hand that out to those that need it at the schools um, here in St. Thomas. And we're kind of excited for you to partner. So that's just a, a look ahead. So just be prepared. If you do have extra supplies or you're going out to buy some, just buy some extra, set them aside, and we'll have more information coming out later. It was great to see you. We are done, kids' shirts right now. So we're going to pray. And when we pray, put our hands out to the side like this and we spell the word pray. It goes P R A Y. We bow our heads and we close our eyes. God, thanks so much. That you ask us to take off our bad habits and put on good ones. And God, we learn from the story of Saul. He was hurting your people. And God, you stopped him and said, anything that you do to me, or you to them, you're doing to me. And God, help us take off our habits of lying or not telling the truth or stealing or hating. God, help us put on hard work, put on forgiveness, put on love. God, help us do that as we spread the message of Jesus. Because God, you loved us no matter what. And it's our job then love others. So we love you and we will love others. Thank you and bless everyone here, moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and cousins and brothers and sisters and everybody represented here. And thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to love God and love others. Have an amazing week. I'll see you guys later.